The questions surrounding access and sharing of data in its many forms as well as data ethics have become a part of one of the most important conversation of our time. The coming leap towards smart cities, digital economies, connected infrastructures will generate an enormous amount of data. The questions of what to do with this data, how to share it securely, and who would be shared with, among other considerations, are creating new challenges for the smart city managers who are juggling with complex data governance challenges, revisiting technology procurement processes, and engaging an increasingly diverse set of local stakeholders. With us today is Jean-Noël Landry, Executive Director of Open North, who will walk us through emerging Canadian smart city practices to think about how openness can balance seemingly competing priorities, weight community values and interests, and temper technological innovation with non-technological solutions. Welcome, Jean-Noël. Nice to be here. Could you explain uh, what is your role and then the stage will all be yours? I'm uh, Jean Weir of uh, Open Not for Profit Montreal. We work as well as entry specialized data government communities. I'm sorry, jean -Oui. we don't hear you well at all. Um, I hear you like a robot. I don't know if it's only me. Thank you. This happens sometimes, you know? <laughs> this had happened with technology. How's this? Is this better? Hello? Can you hear Can me Can we now? test it? Oh, yes, that's perfect now. Thank you. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the old, old uh, earphones here. Great. Okay. So I was just saying um, Open North, we're a Canadian not for profit organization. I'll speak to kind of our vision and mission in my presentation. We specialize in open smart communities um, as well as data governance, that kind of critical. Uh, kind of lens that we bring to the ethical issues that you've, uh, you know, you've introduced in your, your introduction. Thank you, jean -Oui. This virtual stage is all yours. Great. Thank you so much. So let me just switch to my presentation. Here we go. Wonderful. Okay, great. So today I want to talk about the what I'm calling the open smart community imperative. Um, and I'll focus on um, four of them. But before that, I think it's very important to kind of highlight um, some of our values and the way that we work at Open North. So principally, um, you know, we help uh, communities of all sizes across the country as well as internationally um, to, to work with data, uh, well, to, to make data and technology work for communities. Um, and you see that there's some key core principles that are part of uh, our mission and vision. Um, there's four, uh, four uh, key kind of imperatives um, that I'm going to talk about um, after I give you maybe some of a summary kind of observations from key trends that we're seeing in the Canadian uh, context. I'll speak to you about sidewalk labs uh, in the Toronto context, um, but also kind of tease out um, how values and principles can apply to some of the urban problems and challenges that we're facing, some of which obviously very data centric and technology centric. Um, and then I'll give you some examples of how uh, communities in Canada are really kind of stepping up and there's an emerging model that we can call an open smart uh, community model and then unpack some of the uh, examples for each of these uh, four imperatives, um, which to summarize, uh, focus on open tech procurement. Um, so if we talk about you know, technology, we need to also talk about how we procure uh, technology and who is part of those discussions, uh, prioritizing data governance. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of unpack some of those issues around that. Um, entrenching digital rights. So we had uh, Dayak who, who gave a presentation. There's a, uh, a range of different initiatives there. And I want to focus on um, how do we kind of make sure that there's a voice and influence and uh, ability for citizens to actually have influence over uh, the formulation of norms that have an impact around open smart communities. And then last but not least, how do we go from principles to action in a meaningful way through different types of mechanisms? And I've got a good example to share with you then. So let's jump into the, uh, the sidewalk labs, or um, I think preferably to call it the Keysight project, uh, because 
uh, it's not, uh, it's, this is, that's the, the parcel of, of land um, that Sidewalk Labs competed to develop uh, a proposal that uh, I'm sure a lot of people on, that, that are listening in today um, are aware of. Um, in a way, um, it's, it's a bit of a blessing for us to be able to have had that, that experience because it really kind of brought out a number of issues, gaps, challenges, as well as opportunities that relate to um, the way that we want to build the communities of the future um, and really kind of challenged us to think, you know, way past this kind of techno kind of solutionist or techno focused kind of very kind of optimistic kind of vision of that technology will solve all of our problems. And I think many people that are probably listening here um, don't necessarily adhere to that vision, um, but we still want to be able to benefit from the good things that technology and data can can bring. So. Uh, from the, uh, the the Keyside project in Toronto, um, there's a, a key report that came out, which was the Digital Strategy Advisory Panel back in 2019, um, and they, they really kind of helped us focus on some specific specific things that we need to kind of learn from the Toronto experience. Um, I've, I've listed some of the issues there, so um, that the project, as as they kind of critically assessed it, um, wasn't paying enough attention to digital culture and promoting citizen participation, for example, or that it lacked um, accountability to, to community or enabled community members and stakeholders to be able to uh, gain kind of more literacy around some of the concepts that they were asked to participate in uh, shaping uh, through consultation processes. Um, issues around localization of data, as well as questionable confidence in public infrastructure uh, built using untested technology. So that kind of like aspirational um, kind of vision that was kind of forecasted or integrated within the proposal, how to make that like happen, you know, in a way that adheres to uh, regulations and laws, um, you know, locally as well. Underpinning a lot of these issues is, a, is that conversation around data governance and who has the ability to shape uh, the governance aspect of data and technology. Um, in the Canadian context, um, we could say that there's, so as, as Sidewalk Labs uh, was you know, developing its proposal, there was also the Smart Cities Challenge, which I know your, your audience is well aware of because you've had a presentation on it, um, and key principles that were informing um, the development of those proposals, mainly openness, integration, transferability, and collaboration. Um, we had the, uh, the privilege of being able to help uh, shape and, and design um, uh, the, the Smart Cities Challenge itself. And we actually currently run an advisory service for open smart communities across the country, which I'll describe a little bit later. Um, but the key thing here, when we look at um, you know, the definition of what openness is, well, you know, openness, um, is, is really when about when communities make their data truly accessible and usable and barrier free and you know the, these things that really kind of enable innovation as well as safeguard you know rights and responsibilities of, of different levels of, of government as well as putting center the a central focus on on citizens so there's a lot that we can learn you know from from that experience and to have you know dozens if not hundreds you know of communities competing and being able to analyze you know, those proposals, we're, we're able to see that there's an emerging kind of approach that we could call a, a Canadian approach to, to, smart, uh, to smart cities from that openness perspective. Um, still taking into account that um, there are several networks around the world that are also kind of moving in that direction, addressing the issues that we're facing here uh, in Canada. Um, one of which is the Open Government Partnership, uh, the OGP, um, Big, uh, big multilateral organization. Uh, Quebec City was actually just very, very recently uh, selected um, as part of their new kind of local program uh, cohort, uh, which gives it the ability to tap into um, a network of, of communities around the, around the world, um, as well as kind of um, analyze and understand, you know, that sometimes we feel that the, the, the struggles and challenges that we're facing at a very local level are unique to our circumstances when in fact, you know, there's actually a global conversation, which is obviously no surprise to a lot of people that are listening in around kind of data uh, and governance in particular. So it'll be nice to see how Quebec is able to, you know, benefit from uh, the OGP membership as well as share some of its own best practices there uh, more globally. Um, so how do we apply an openness lens to uh, address complex problems? Um, I think the key thing here and, uh, you know, with uh, kind of the audience uh, today from a municipal setting, um, 
<laughs> let's just put it this way. There's no shortage of challenges to, that communities are facing. If, and if anything, those problems are becoming much more complex, you know, day after day. Um, you know, we, we know about you know, COVID, we know about climate change, um, but where do we start? So these competing priorities really require us to think through, you know, how, are, how do we approach? How do we critically think about those problems from the perspective of the value added that data and technology can, uh, can bring? So that's why the, the openness lens, um, I think bring, brings a useful kind of uh, way of kind of setting out a set of priorities as well as opportunities to help address and define those problems as well. Um, so achieving openness outcomes, so what does that mean uh, tangibly for an open smart community? Well, it would mean breaking down silos within a public administration, uh, being much more inclusive and engaging in developing public policies, um, uh, aspiring and designing connected technology so that interoperability um, and that kind of really kind of critical kind of digital infrastructure like 5G uh, to be able to facilitate kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, data that's being collected uh, through IoT and as well as being able to analyze them across different uh, projects and initiatives on a local basis. And that ethical dimension is obviously critical here. So being able to focus on outcomes from an openness perspective as it applies to different components um, of a city um, is, is a way that you're able to yield some, uh, some of those uh, results. And in the Canadian context, um, we're, we're the technical lead, Open North is the technical lead partner of the Community Solutions Network. And we've had the opportunity to see really how there's these emerging trends around open smart communities. And I think coming up with the ability to kind of pinpoint where these outcomes of, are taking place and connecting the dots really gives us a, a new narrative in the Canadian context around that emerging model. So for example, in the case of Edmonton, um, they're using the Government of Canada's uh, gender-based analysis uh, methodology. Um, the town of Midland in Ontario um, is um, facing complex uh, problem solving to break down kind of informational uh, silos that uh, relate to specific um, issues locally, like 311 data. Um, Saskatoon in, Sask in Saskatchewan, um, uh, we're, we're learning with us around uh, plans that are appropriate that for appropriate data governance framework as it implements uh, IT systems as part of its smart city strategy. Uh, we worked a lot with the town of uh, Bridgewater in Nova Scotia to help them de develop a consent based um, resident data governance policy. Trois Rivières in Quebec, Claude was already mentioned, glad to see that. We're working with them to develop their, uh, their smart city challenge. And they've come up with an innovative, innovative way of bringing in partners to co-create that, um, that strategy, as well as really kind of tapping into uh, the richness and diversity of their local community as well. Um, so open smart community, is a thing, okay? It's it's happening as as we speak. Many communities don't necessarily name it that way, as they're focusing on kind of administering services and managing their budgets uh, locally. At Open North, because we saw that this trend was emerging and really kind of moving and kind of evolving from our focus on open uh, data initially, we uh, we coined the the first definition of an an open smart city, which I I, I share here. So you see how it's really about different sectors connecting together as well as being inclusive and collaborative with residents, data and technology put at the service of communities through fair, ethical and transparent governance that really kind of balance these different aspects of what makes a city livable from an economic, social, as well as environmental components and priorities. Um, so with that definition, when we look at the, the Smart Cities Challenge and we look at uh, how the principles you know, and the criteria um, you know, were, were measured for the winning proposal in the Montreal context, we see how what Montreal was able to do was to connect data and people and have very, very well articulated and rooted uh, problem framing uh, in the, the context of the community um, itself. So now the, the hard work of implementing that proposal, and we're, we're the lead uh, partner on data governance, is to be able to synchronize and to connect the dots between these different partners within that overarching vision that's really driven by values of openness, uh, transferability, innovation, and whatnot. So we're very keen to see, and as we do the work with our partners in the Montreal context, how we can uh, succeed, obviously, we're, we're competitive and we're collaborative, but then also kind of uh, extract lessons learned from the Montreal context for the greater benefit of communities across Canada and also internationally. Um, 
Um, so when we talk about uh, data governance, um, it's uh, there's a number of different initiatives that, that are there. And data governance is really kind of the, 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 the key here um, in, it, in the kind of setting the, the norms, right? In the way that uh, different stakeholders have different access to influencing the way that we shape the cities of our future. So norms, uh, standards, um, whether it's through frameworks, policies, or even charters, um, are quite important at this critical stage in the Canadian context in particular. Remember, we don't have a GDPR type of uh, framework just like we have in Europe. So in many ways, municipalities are looking for guidance on you know, what are the principles, what are the norms that we should be uh, abiding by. Um, DIAC, obviously, uh, was, was mentioned before. We had uh, Joni present, uh, which is great. Um, and we're, you know, we're, we're exploring a partnership with DIAC as well to understand that, that ecosystem. You've got the CIO Strategic Council uh, developing, and they just kind of released a, a national standard on health data and information governance. Uh, the Standards Council of Canada has a multi-stakeholder data collaborative uh, initiative. The World Council on City Data has an ISO, uh, and with an ISO focus, is working with communities to adopt different ISO standards. Um, and so you've got um, you've got governments and different types of stakeholders, from nonprofits to the private sector now, that are really kind of collaborating around developing these uh, these norms. But how do citizens and residents have an influence around the formulation of these norms is a really critical uh, kind of issue that we all need to be able to, to be mindful of, as well as being able to bring in stakeholders that um, have different types of mandates and missions in terms of representing the interests of individual citizens um, at, the, at the local level. So when we talk about the impact of norms in setting governance structures on data, we need to be able to look at what agency is provided to these different types type of stakeholders so that we balance different interests uh, and values that are represented in the norms that help shape these data governance ecosystems. Um, data governance issues are very, uh, very complex. There's quite a few. There's a lot of different ways of approaching this. Um, I've listed here some, some key ones um, from work that we've done uh, in the context of, uh, of, of Toronto as well. Uh, where they called upon us to provide them with some guidance on, on some, uh, some of their thinking and comparing different data governance models. Um, and finally, when we get into these, uh, these imperatives, you see how data governance uh, is really kind of at the grassroots here of how we're able to manage uh, data. Um, and one of the ways that we manage data and technology is through procurement. And so um, there's a big... Um, I think one of the, the lessons that we learned from the, uh, the Sidewalk Labs experience is really kind of going upstream and understanding, okay, who gets to decide what technology is being purchased or procured uh, in the interest or not of different types of stakeholders. Um, so obviously from the perspective of municipality, um, having you know, business interests is important, um, but certainly uh, citizens at the core of our democracies is necessary as well. So you see um, some of the benefits and advantages of an open tech procurement there. And I've, I've just kind of added a few examples of reports um, that are coming up. And actually all of those, uh, those reports have come up in the last uh, two months. So there's quite a big uh, movement towards that. And open procurement is also something that we do at, uh, at Open North. Um, prioritizing data governance. Um, we've broken it down into uh, three different um, kind of layers or mechanisms. Uh, so structural, procedural, and relational. Um, each of those will have different ways of being able to be kind of implemented. So there needs to be um, you know, an attention to how to kind of treat different levels of, of government because it has to do with different relationships and different types of partnerships um, that are brought into this, uh, this data ecosystem. Um, entrenching digital rights um, is certainly important. We know about the, uh, the charter for uh, digital data uh, in the context of Montreal. Um, digital rights are, are, or data uh, charters aren't necessarily new. Um, the open data charter was uh, one that was developed um, several years ago that's been adopted by uh, cities like the city of Edmonton. I think Montreal is also kind of thinking about it. City coalitions for digital rights as well. Um, so entrenching uh, digital rights um, is a good first step. You need to have the, the language um, to be able to represent the interests of the issues that are at heart of different stakeholders. And then lastly, how to activate principles into governance mechanisms. So going from 
sometimes high level or maybe more conceptual kind of language around what ought to be done from a data governance perspective, but then how do we manage that risk? How do we manage data effectively? How do we bring people in? And the, there's a really good example yeah, from the city of Seattle. I'm, I'm I'm sorry, that's all the time that we have. That's great. I'm really sorry. That's good. <laughs> Thank I'm you done. very much for Get your presentation. Touch.